Do you fantasize about world domination? Do you believe you have all the mind and guts to take over the map in front of your screen? If yes, then you are at the right place. Because today, we are going to mention some of the popular 4X and Grand Strategy games that will test your limits. For the ones who know, and already play any of them, they know how addicted these games can be, and can keep you go on for days and months on just single play thrusts, and the results can be overly satisfying. So, without wasting any more second, let's dig right into the list of 16 popular 4X and Grand Strategy games of all times. Supremacy 1914 is a multiplayer real-time strategy browser game in which the player manages one of the countries in the world during World War I. The player competes with countries controlled by other players playing the same game and with countries controlled by the computer. The game offers you the chance to step into the shoes of a World War I general, and as you would expect, each of the playable countries is a little bit different with access to varying resources and the ability to create military forces that reflect those actually used within history. That's an impressive level of detail in this game, particularly when you consider that it's free to play. Resource management, province upgrades, coalitions and alliances play key roles in the game, in addition to the conquest aspect. If you liked Supremacy 1914, and wondered if it was about World War II, then you should definitely try out Call of War, World War II because it takes the exact same formula, but applies it to World War II instead, which as you can imagine, changes things up quite a lot. There are 10 nations to choose from, including Germany, the United Kingdom, the United States, and the Soviet Union, and each of them plays very differently. What you do while in control of these countries is up to you. Do you want to invest in the economy and forge alliances with other countries? Or do you want to tear through the world like a warlord? There are many options available to you, and with the longest game going on for 411 days, you'll have plenty of time to experiment with different strategies in this tactical arena. As a player of Call of War, you assume leadership over a country and try to achieve world domination. Strategic planning, tactical troop maneuvers and smart diplomacy play a key role in winning a game of Call of War. Total War Rome 2 is a strategy game developed by Creative Assembly and published by Sega. Total War Rome 2 is set in Europe, the Mediterranean, and the Near East in the Classical Antiquity period. The grand single-player campaign begins in 272 BC and lasts for 300 years. However, the player also has the option to play further, as there are no timed victory conditions. Like its predecessor, Rome 2 blends turn-based grand strategy and civilization management with real-time tactical battles. The War's Cape engine powers the game's visuals, and new unit cameras allow players to focus on individual soldiers on the real-time battlefield, which may contain thousands of combatants at the same time. Creative Assembly has stated that it wished to bring out the more human side of war, with soldiers reacting as their comrades get killed around them, and officers inspiring men with heroic speeches. Hearts of Iron 4 is a grand strategy wargame by Paradox. It is the sequel to 2009's Hearts of Iron 3, and the fourth main installment in the Hearts of Iron series. Like previous games in the series, Hearts of Iron 4 is a grand strategy wargame that focuses on World War II. The player may take control of any nation in the world in either 1936 or 1939, and lead them to victory or defeat against other countries. This series is unique in its attempt to be a true grand strategy World War II game, as opposed to other war games that operate at similar strategic scales, but generally forego the breadth of the entire war. Much like Europa Universalis IV, here you can play as any nation on any continent during this era, with the politics serving as the backdrop to a World War II-like event. You must do your best to profit and survive. Hearts of Iron 4 is going through somewhat of a transition since launch. It's been torn between the need to try and provide an authentic World War II experience and an emerging player base that enjoys a more sandbox approach, allowing for alternate history and what-if scenarios. Because of this, not all countries have equal access to interesting decision trees at the moment, 
with the focus currently being on those who were significant players at the time. It does currently seem to be favoring alternate history with each update, so bear that in mind if you're a World War II enthusiast. Europa Universalis 4 is a 2013 grand strategy game in the Europa Universalis series by Paradox. The game has been formed to begin historically, with events occurring when they did in history. The game itself is an interactive map of Earth, divided into the provinces that compose nations. Each of these provinces contribute to their country either positively or negatively, as provinces can both provide resources to a nation and serve as a point of unrest and rebellion. The gameplay requires the player to lead a nation by finding a balance of military, diplomacy, and economy. The player does so through their choices as sovereign of their nation and through the spending of resources available to them like prestige, power projection, stability, ducats, manpower, etc. Players can choose to conquer the world by military might, become a colonial superpower, establish trade dominance etc. as one of over 500 different nations. The game is a sandbox environment, and while there is no strict rule on winning the game, the game of the player is over when the player's nation is removed, or annexed from the map, or the date reaches the year 1821. Crusader Kings 2 is a grand strategy game developed by Paradox set in the Middle Ages. The game is a dynasty simulator in which the player controls a medieval dynasty from 1066 to 1453 AD, and with Charlemagne DLC, you can even start at 769 AD. In Crusader Kings 2 the player works to achieve success for their dynasty, through the strategic use of war, marriages and assassinations among many other things. The game depicts or mentions numerous historical figures, including William the Conqueror, Charlemagne, Genghis Khan, Harold Godwin's son, Constantine X Doukas, Harun al-Rashid, Richard the Lionheart, Alfred the Great, Saladin many more, but allows for the player to choose less significant figures such as minor dukes and counts. Success is defined solely by the player. The only in-game objective is to obtain as many prestige and piety points as possible, in order to surpass the various historically relevant European dynasties in a fictional prestige ranking system. The game ends when the player's current character dies without an heir of the same dynasty to succeed him or her, or when all landed titles of the count rank or above are stripped from all members of the player's dynasty including themselves, or when the game reaches its end in 1453, unless the player is in observer mode, at which point the game will continue onwards. Released in September 2020, this is the highly anticipated sequel to 2011's Crusader Kings 2. What makes the series unique amongst grand strategy games is the idea that you aren't just managing a kingdom or nation, you're managing a person and their family. From the lowliest of counts to the king of kings, you are put in charge of an entire dynasty of characters and tasked with ensuring its continued success and domination amidst the backdrop of medieval Europe. Crusader Kings 3 has doubled down on this idea marrying the RPG and the map-based aspects in a way its predecessor was never really designed to handle. Players begin as a character in either 867 or 1066. The game map is about four times more detailed than the one in Crusader Kings 2, and slightly larger, incorporating Europe, Africa roughly as far south as the equator, and Asia as far east as Tibet. Upon the death or deposition of a player's character, they may continue to play as that character's heir. Overall, players develop a dynasty over the centuries, with the game ending in 1453. It's a great one to start with if you're a grand strategy newbie, as the development team have put a lot of work into tutorialization and UI design, making sure the player is never more than a couple of clicks away from finding what they need. Total War Warhammer 2 is a turn-based grand strategy, and real-time tactics game developed by Creative Assembly and published by Sega. In the campaign, players move armies around the map and manage settlements in a turn-based manner. Players engage in diplomacy with and fight against AI-controlled factions. When armies meet, they battle in real time. The game also has a custom battles mode, where players can create customized real-time battles, as well as online multiplayer battles. 
those who own races from the first game, will have the same races unlocked for multiplayer in the second game. The main campaign of the game is called Eye of the Vortex. It is a narrative-focused campaign, where each of the playable races has its own story and cutscenes. In addition, players who own both Total War Warhammer and Warhammer 2 have access to a huge combined campaign called Mortal Empires, which is more of a sandbox experience. Like its predecessors, Total War Warhammer 3 features turn-based strategy and real-time tactics gameplay similar to other games in the Total War series. In the campaign, Players move armies around the map and manage settlements in a turn-based manner. Players engage in diplomacy with, and fight against, AI-controlled factions. When armies meet, they battle in real time. The game will also have a custom battles mode, where players can create customized real-time battles, as well as online multiplayer battles. Those who own races from the first two games will have the same races unlocked for multiplayer in the third game, a combined world map named Immortal Empires, similar to the Mortal Empires campaign in the previous installment for owners of the first two games. The main campaign takes place within the Realm of Chaos, said to be the source of all magic in the Warhammer fantasy setting. Total War Three Kingdoms is a turn-based strategy real-time tactics game developed by Creative Assembly and published by Sega set in the Three Kingdoms period between 220 and 280 AD. Players control one of the game's 12 factions, who must eliminate other factions, unify China, and become its ultimate ruler. These factions are led by warlords, such as Cao Cao, Liu Bei, and Sun Quan. Three Kingdoms has made the campaign layer better than it's ever been, with some very meaningful character interactions and dynamics between the various factions. Real-time tactical combat sits somewhere between the fantasy and historical offerings from the Total War series. While there are certain aspects that will come down to personal taste, it's still a very robust and very decent tactical battle engine that really helps give weight to the political machinations of the turn-based layer. It's a shame really that Creative Assembly decided to end support for the game, barely two years after it was released. Thankfully, there's enough DLC to make it worthwhile. Victoria series is yet another feather in Paradox's grand strategy cap. It may be slightly on the older side, but it presents a markedly different experience of grand strategy than Europa Universalis IV that will appeal to any strategist looking for a focus on the economics of running a nation. Victoria II begins at the dawn of the colonial era, with the option to take control of any country on the world map. From the 19th century onwards, you are free to shape the political, industrial, and colonial landscape of your nation however you please. You can enact social reform on important issues like healthcare and wages, and decide your trading policies with neighboring countries. The player is in charge of a number of tools for managing the economy, science, domestic politics, diplomacy, army and navy. The main difference from other global strategies of Paradox Interactive is a significant emphasis on the details of internal processes occurring in the state and the developed system of diplomacy available to the great powers. The game has many historical aspects to it, such as the ability to colonize places that, at the time, were not under the control of any European power, such as Sub-Saharan Africa, North and Western Canada, and parts of Asia. Additionally, the game possesses a multiplayer mode, in which up to 32 players can play simultaneously. As you might expect, not all of your decisions will be accepted by your subjects, and their fluctuating loyalties may result in dire consequences for your power on the global stage. Victoria 3 is a 2022 grand strategy game developed by Paradox, and is a sequel to the 2010 game Victoria 2. Victoria 3 spans world history from 1836 to 1936 and allows the player to control any one of over 100 countries that existed during that time period. The game focuses on politics and demographics, with gameplay focusing on appealing to and appeasing population groups called POPs, that are large blocks of people with shared interests. POPs possess a variety of interests with different ideologies that the player deals with. Another system in the game is diplomatic plays, 
which borrows heavily from Victoria II's crisis system. When attempting to force other countries to concede land or open markets, players will present a target country with a demand, detailing what they desire, which will result in the target country having the opportunity to demand concessions from the aggressor. Following this exchange of demands, a timer will begin counting down as both sides have a chance to mobilize troops and attract potential allies by offering spoils. If no diplomatic resolution is reached before the timer runs out, war will be declared. Designer Michael Anderson explained that, this system was designed with the intent to tone down the role of warfare by making diplomacy equally as capable. Warhammer 40k Gladius, Relics of War, brings you to a world of terror and violence. It is the first 4x turn-based strategy game set in Warhammer 40k, and you will lead one of four factions namely, Astra Militarum, Space Marines, Orcs, and Necrons, each with their own unique gameplay, technological tree, units, and heroes. You will construct cities, buildings, and fortifications to expand your empire and produce an army to vanquish your foes. Harvest resources, and research new technologies to fuel and upgrade your machinery of war. Command a wide array of devastating weaponry, issue city edicts, and deploy tactical operations. Recruit hero units that possess distinct special abilities and can be equipped with items ranging from advanced grenades to mighty relics of the past. As they become more and more powerful with each rank, they turn into true champions of your cause. Sid Meier's Civilization V is a 4x game in the Civilization series developed by Firaxis. In Civilization V, the player leads a civilization from prehistoric times into the future on a procedurally generated map, attempting to achieve one of a number of different victory conditions through research, exploration, diplomacy, expansion, economic development, government and military conquest. During their turn, the player must manage units representing civilian and military forces. Civilian units can be directed to find new cities, improve land, and spread religion, while military units can go into battle to take over other civilizations. The player controls production in their cities to produce new units and buildings, handles diplomacy with other civilizations in the game, and directs the civilization's growth in technology, culture, food supply, and economics. The player ends the game when a victory condition is met. Victory conditions include taking over the entire world by force, convincing the other civilizations to acknowledge the player as a leader through diplomacy, or becoming influential with all civilizations through tourism, winning the space race to build a colony spaceship to reach a nearby planet, or being the most powerful civilization on the globe after a set number of turns. Sid Meier's Civilization VI is a turn-based grand strategy 4X game by Firaxis and 2K. Similar to previous installments, the goal for the player is to develop a civilization from an early settlement through many in-game millennia to become a world power and achieve one of several victory conditions, such as through military domination, technological superiority, or cultural influence over the other human and computer-controlled opponents. Players do this by exploring the world, founding new cities, building city improvements, deploying military troops to attack and defend themselves from others, researching new technologies and civics advancements, developing an influential culture, and engaging in trade and negotiations with other world leaders. Conflict of Nations World War III is a military-themed strategy game set in the late 20th and early 21st century, featuring contemporary battlefield technology, terrorist insurgencies, and weapons of mass destruction. At the heart of the game is a detailed, real-time combat system, which gives you control over an existing nation and its armed forces. Troop movements across the map take place in real time, sometimes taking hours to fulfill their assigned mission goals throughout the world. This requires a deep level of strategic planning and tactical execution. To ensure your nation's economic efficiency and technological superiority, you must carefully manage your country's economy, military, and weapons research. Forming strong alliances and coalitions is an essential part of the modern military environment. Conflict of Nations World War III provides you with the diplomatic tools necessary to form teams and interest groups in order to achieve joint victory and dominate the theaters of war. 
So, that is it for today. I hope you found this helpful and interesting, and if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Share it with your friends and community, it really helps in the algorithm. Also mention in the comments, which Forex and Grand Strategy is your favorite. We will be back soon with more amazing videos.